Well, joining us this morning for the latest on local efforts to keep the virus at bay is a deputy chief medical officer, Dr. Delon Brennan. Now, the summer solstice officially started on Saturday, and it's been more than three months of restrictions. Island communities, for the most part, are back to normal. But for places like New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Bimini, weekend lockdowns, along with beach and park closures, remain in effect. Tell us, are health officials concerned about a possible surge in cases once locals are given the green light to visit public spaces? I think what we've seen so far is a reflection of sort of society wanting to be let out, um, getting out of lockdown, getting out of curfews. And that reflection, unfortunately, at times has been where people have ignored public health measures. They have, you know, gathered in places, small places with lots of people. People aren't wearing masks, you know, aren't using hand, proper hand washing. Um, obviously, ignoring the social distance. And that, that has had us concerned that not necessarily now, because we don't really have a significant number of community transmitted cases. You know, most of our cases are happening in clusters. Um, that isn't as much of a concern. Our concern is, are we going to be prepared for when, you know, we allow others to come into country? So the, when tourists really start coming in and, you know, other Bahamian residents who have been out of the country start coming back from places where there's large amounts of community transmission. I think that's really what has us concerned is, is the populace prepared to have those measures in place when there is a bigger threat um, that is possible. And switching to that focus on July 1st is the date the country is set for allowing the resumption of international travel to the Bahamas. Talk to us about the structure of health protocols and measures at borders mm -hmm. like airports and marinas to ensure that our COVID-19 numbers remain on the decline. So we have made contact with a lot of the other agencies that are actually physically in place in all of those areas. So whether um, those include persons from the ministries of tourism, immigration, customs, and the like, you know, our airline partners, um, we have made contact with them. We've allowed, let them know what our protocols currently are in country and what we look to do when it comes to July 1st. And so we are making sure that at least the persons at our borders are helping to secure the borders. You know, the protocols that continue to remain in place with persons being required to have testing prior to coming into the country. Um, many persons are actually registering their desire to come into country before they get here. So they are informed um, that they need testing, but they also give us information so that if something was to to occur, um, that we'd be able to do contact tracing with them. So I think the agencies who are charged with being able to put in place those protocols and making sure that they're, um, the regulations are in place are well aware on are being prepared even more so over these next um, few days. But we need to make sure that, you know, we stand strong in those protocols. Now, one of the last times we spoke, uh, we talked about testing being done at nursing homes as well as at the prison. Are any other mass testing um, schedules on um, the horizon for you? Not currently, um, because most of the, the testing has revealed that we are still, we're not necessarily having community um, transmission, and it's really occurring in clusters. So we are testing around those clusters. So we're not doing mass testing per se. I think what we've been able to show is using our contact tracing activities um, in country and not just in the Bahamas, but also in other countries in our region is having that type of ability to do contact tracing around every case that we have has yielded the ability to quarantine and isolate those cases, minimize the amount of transmission into the communities. And it's actually proven that mass testing in that scenario isn't required. And healthcare workers have surfaced as heroes in the virus crisis, but are officials monitoring stress levels or psychosocial or physical implications from COVID-19 specific to prevention? And what structures are set up to assist these persons? Well, we've engaged the services and the advice of our mental health professionals in countries. So the Bahamas Psychological Association, our psychiatrists and psychologists and other social workers that are within um, the healthcare system, both in the public sector and the private sector, um, to you know, give advice as to what's necessary to provide services to those that need it. We make sure that 
um, persons know, especially from healthcare provider standpoint, that those serv- services are available to them. We try to make sure that it's not just one individual or a small group of individuals that are doing all of the heavy lifting. We're, we're trying to spread it out as much as possible so that you don't necessarily have a large amount of the burden being placed on you know a small number of people because that can add to the stress that goes along with it. But at the same time, obviously, we can't have all of our healthcare workers out there because some of them are at high risk for not just obtaining the disease, but having um, some of the serious side effects, uh, serious complications to go along with the disease. So we do try to minimize their exposures as well. So it is a bit of a challenge, but um, we try to make sure that those mental health services are available to them. We focus some of our town hall meetings and the like on some of those services. So we want to make sure that people know that it's available to them. Um, Of course, none of us think we've done everything that we can, so we want to continue to enhance what we are doing, but I think we are we are showing that we at least have some concern about it, and we're putting some services in, in place in order to address those needs. Dr. Brennan, as always, thank you so much for your time, and take care. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Lloyd Allen, ZNS Network News.